And so to our commanders, command sergeants, majors, soldiers, family members, friends, good neighbors, community leaders, general officers, retired and active duty, thank you for joining us here on this auspicious, auspicious occasion, Fort Hood's 70th anniversary. For 70 years, the soldiers of Fort Hood and Central Texas community have worked together to train, equip, and deploy this nation's finest young men and women to defend our nation on distant battlefields. We have always pursued this mission together, perhaps at times less than perfect harmony, but always together. Central Texas witnessed the birth of then Camp Hood during the darkest days of World War II. In 1942, the minimum wage was 30 cents per hour. A gallon of gas cost 19 cents. I filled my car up the other day at 4.95, and German tanks were unchecked in their domination of Western Europe. It was a war unlike anything the world had witnessed before. The trenches and railways that had defined the previous war seemed irrelevant in the face of this new style of fighting. Even artillery and air power only played supporting roles to this new blitzkrieg warfare era. It was something new, effective, and dangerous. It was totally foreign to the American military experience. But as the American Army had done so many times before, we assessed the threat, analyzed the crucial elements, and formulated a response. We began to build the weapons needed to meet this new threat and began to train in the use of those weapons. Right here at what was then called Camp Hood, the equipping and training of tank destroyers was deemed a project of crucial importance. 108,000 acres of this Central Texas farmland was allocated to become the U.S. Army's Tank Destroyer Tactical and Firing Center. The decision was not an easy one. The project required the relocation of some 300 families. One of our special guests today, Ms. Juanita Fawcett, was present at the opening ceremony for the camp 70 years ago. The daughter of cotton and corn farmer, she was 19 years old when she, her husband Troy, and their newborn baby, newborn baby witnessed the Camp Hood opening ceremony. She says, when they began taking the land, we just thought we'd get the land back after Fort Hood or that we could buy it back or whatever. Well, she recalls that that September day was hot and her infant took most of her attention, adding, if I would have known Fort Hood would become the installation it is, I would have been all eyes and ears. Well, Mrs. Fawcett, I hope you find today's ceremony slightly more comfortable and maybe even more interesting. Thank you for joining us today. Please raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. In just 12 months, the population of Camp Hood shot from 38,000 to 95,000 soldiers. Maneuvering live fire training with the new half-track mounted anti-tank weapons was the mainstay of the camp for the duration of the war. By the end of World War II, the mythology of the Blitzkrieg had been largely debunked. German tanks, along with the threat they symbolized, were strewn across the scrap heaps of Europe. The U.S. Army had risen to the threat and defeated it, not by imitating it, but by developing effective countermeasures independently and by working with an international coalition of allies from across the world. Eleven years ago, we were in the dark days of another war. The despicable acts on New York and the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania stunned us all. It was a threat that was not defined by national borders or even clear cultural boundaries. These terror attacks symbolized a new type of threat, and once again, unlike anything we had witnessed before, like the Blitzkrieg of 1942, it was something new, effective, and certainly dangerous. And once again, Fort Hood was at the apex of our nation's response. Home to the three corps, two divisions, the 1st Cavalry Division and the 4th Infantry Division, as well as 12 other major subordinate units, Fort Hood soldiers began to train to fight the war on terror. For the last 11 years, we have been fighting in Afghanistan and just recently completed operations in Iraq. The scope of the conflict that we have fought for the last 11 years covers the full spectrum of land warfare. The training demands of this conflict were incredibly diverse in nature and enormous in scope. Cultural orientation, languages, convoy operations, stability operations, surveillance, counter IED, urban operations, unmanned aerial vehicle piloting, route clearance operations, joint and combined operations, and training the host nation's fledgling police and defense forces. The list goes on and on. In the aftermath of this conflict, we have had to develop even more new skills and knowledge. 
opening the Warrior Transition Brigade Barracks and upcoming construction of the Satellite Intrepid Facility for Traumatic Brain Injury Treatment, both in order to better support the needs of soldiers and their families, assisting wounded warriors and their families as they recover from injuries and prepare for a productive return to civilian life is just one of our current priorities. Once again, this conflict has been lengthy and fought on faraway battlefields. Once again, the Army has accurately assessed a new threat, and with the help of a coalition of forces from across the world, we have met and defeated the threat. And I am confident that because of the relationship that we at The Great Place have with you, the members of our Central Texas community, we will be, remain ready to assess, adapt, and meet the new challenges of the next conflict. As today's conflict moves towards its final chapters, there are more soldiers on Fort Hood than there have been in 10 years. Not the 95,000 of 1942, but about 46,000. That goes up to about 85,000 when you count their families, our great Army civilians, and contractors. But there is one number I want you to consider, and this perhaps is the most telling number of them all. Where the great place is concerned, 250,000 military retirees have chosen to make this incredible Texas community their home. Think about that for a moment. These are not people who live in this community because it is where the job requires it of them. They have chosen to live here. They have chosen to live here because of the Central Texas community and its absolute devotion to the well-being of the American soldier and the soldier's family. Since its creation right here in the middle of beautiful Central Texas hill and lake country, Fort Hood has been the station of choice for America's soldiers. With the support of community officials like the mayors of the surrounding towns and key members of the local community like our members of our Good Neighbors program, Fort Hood enjoys a level of cooperation and integration with the local community that I have never witnessed elsewhere. Look at our schools and the importance of the relationship we share there. 24,983 students from Fort Hood attend school in the eight districts that surround Fort Hood. That's 33% of the total students in 62 elementary schools, 24 middle schools, and 11 high schools. The new Fort Hood Stadium will be used by Ellison High for their homecoming game against Harker Heights on 12 October. Look at our civilian and military law enforcement organizations. They work together almost seamlessly with innovative programs like the Senior Leadership Ride Along Program, providing senior Army leaders with a direct insight of our communities where so many of our soldiers live. Other efforts include measures to facilitate quicker response times for EMT, fire, and other first responders in and around Fort Hood and the surrounding towns. Look at the fantastic events we share. There isn't a rodeo that happens here in this community that does not feature a military appreciation night. You invite the soldier and the Army family to your rodeos, state fairs, and you never leave any doubt that you care for them and want them to be involved in all of your good times. When we, have had a, when we have an event here at the Great Place, be it Phantom Warrior Week or our recent Freedom Fest, we can count on a huge turnout by our local neighbors. We share every holiday, parade, and memorial observance. You enhance our military, cultural, and historical observances like Women's Equality Day and Hispanic Heritage Month. And you are always ready to learn exactly what we are doing in the operational and training areas. As when so many of you attended briefings about our post-strategic development plan and our recent warfighter exercise. We at The Great Place enjoy a unique relationship with our local community that makes this truly the station of choice for our nation's young soldiers and their families. In keeping with the theme of our special relationship with the Central Texas community, I would like to take this opportunity to make an announcement of particular importance today. Mr. Frank Willis Mayborn was a newspaper editor a publisher and a leading figure in the development of Bell County. His wife, Sue, has joined us here today. Sue, please raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> to those of us here at the great place today, he is remembered as a former soldier, a friend of the Army, and a good neighbor. From 1939 to 1940, as the president of the Temple Chamber of Commerce, he organized and chaired a military affairs committee, which played a vital role in the early phases of both Camp Hood and McCloskey General Hospital, or Teague Veterans Center, as it's known today. He enlisted in 1942 and served as a public relations officer, eventually serving on the staff of General Dwight D. Eisenhower as his assistant chief of public relations office. Before leaving the Army as a major in 1945, he, was, he earned the Bronze Star Medal. After his time as a soldier, he kept right on helping our Army here at Fort Hood. 
serving on an advisory board for most of the commanders on this post. In 1968, he accompanied General Clark to Vietnam on a fact-finding tour in preparation for personally briefing the President, Lyndon B. Johnson. Frank Mayborn was awarded the Creighton W. Abrams Medal in 1979 for his many contributions to our Army. As a member of Fort Hood's Good Neighbor Program, he was indispensable to our efforts to make informed decisions in the pursuit of lasting, meaningful partnerships across the Central Texas community. Today, I'm proud to announce our plan to name the East Fort Hood Gate in honor of Frank W. Mayborn. The actual naming ceremony will take place at a time later this year. Please join me in a round of applause. It is a small gesture of gratitude when we balance it against all that this terrific soldier and citizen did for us, not only at the great place, but for our entire Army and our nation. Thank you for coming today, Sue. We appreciate your support, and we look forward to dedicating the gate here in the near future. Again, thank you all for being here today. Thank you for all you have done for the last 70 years in support of the great place and all you will do for the next 70 years. Happy anniversary, happy birthday, Fort Hood. May God bless our tremendous soldiers and their families who continue to serve in harm's way today. God bless our Army and our great nation. Phantom Warriors, Army Strong. <laughs>